So I think it's time for another secret session. And we've just put some of this in our top kit. Jura Slip 13 from Preston. I've actually had this since I've done the feature with Joe Crass last year, before it come out, but I didn't manage to put any in my top kits to dry it out. So I think today is a good time to do it. We're gonna nip up the road to a local fishery called Coppice Lane Fishery, and uh, we'll give it a try. We've just got here, it is five degrees and it's quarter past 11. I'm only gonna have an hour, really. That's, that's all I want, but enough to catch a couple of carp and give this elastic a go. So yeah, let's go and have a look at a peg. We'll try and get one out of the wind. It's absolutely freezing. I'm gonna have a look on Beckett's pull. So I just had a look on Beckett's pool. I didn't really fancy any of the pegs on there. So just walking around now, it's a bridge pool. Let's go and have a look. There's a nice peg here, just next to the bridge wind off our back. So we've just dropped our kit off. Just there right by the peg. It looks absolutely lovely. Right, let's get some kit set up and I'll see you in a minute. So we're all set up. It took us about half an hour to set up. It's quarter to 12 now. And like I said, just set up one top kit with that Dura Slip 13 elastic in. Just got a 0.3 mud line of float and it's set at about uh, just over two and a half feet, so I've just found where it comes up the shelf and uh, I'm just going to start here on them maggots. I've still got them maggots from the last secret session and I'm just going to put on, oh it's cold, just a, a cad pot with a big lid on it from Matrix. I'm just going to start on maggots, just a couple of maggots on the hook and drip feeding uh, maggots for a pot. So yeah, let's have a go. Because that bridge is quite a nice feature, I'm hoping that the, there's going to be some cart just held around there. But I have got some, some hard pellets in my in my bucket, just in case we need them, but I'm hoping that we don't. We might have a few silverfish first. My far bank mark is just that, there's two trees together. And it's my left, the left hand tree. I'm just gonna 
Tell you what, I'll pick, I'll pick some dice to come out in this weather, I tell you. The last session started snowing on us. This session it's like four degrees and blowing a hoolie. Don't make it easy for myself. Just put a couple of number nine back shot on on that line, just to hold it, hold that piece of line from float to tip, just steady, just because we've got this wind. Got the float dotted quite low. There we go. That's our first bite. Elastic's not actually as soft as I thought it would be. Feels quite beefy to be honest. My experience with this like synthetic solid elastic is that it's like lacking in backbone but this this feels quite oh, beefy it feels weird Seems like it's dealing with them fine. Nice common. Before, when I've used this type of elastic, this is when it struggles at the net. Like when you, when you like trying to pull the fish up, doesn't seem to have any backbone. Wrap around his feet. This is, I'm liking this. It's a nice fish as well. It's five pounder. Trying to hold him up for you. back, try and catch his big brother. It's 
stick to double maggot again. Just filling that pot right up. I'm just giving the maggot the, the pot a dunk under the water, just so the maggot's sticking whilst I'm shipping out. This time we'll actually wait until that wing calms down before we feed. Just rattle them all out. Just get the rig. Just lay it out. To the right hand side it's slightly deeper. So just lay it into that deeper water. And just let it fall into the shelf. That way I know my rig's my rig's tight. Just out of curiosity, I plumbed up down there, and it's the same depth down there by the bridge or by this tree as over there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give this another minute and I'm going to have a drop down there just to see if there's any fish just hiding under that tree. I'm just going to flip the rig out, let's put my maggots in. I'm going to drag my rig in, because it looks like there's some snags down there. I don't really want to lower my rig in any way down there, just because you could lower it onto the snags. You don't really want to be hooking. snacks. I'd rather just drag it in. That way I know it's going to be fishing. Oh, it's so cold. There you go. Bite pretty sharpish then, really. Oh, he's pulling for that bridge. Yes, uh, he wants to get under that bridge in. There you go, he's under control now. That elastic, I really, really like that. I was saying earlier, it might be a bit too much for for this stamp of fish, but in scenarios like this, where you've got that that bridge there, now this fish is still trying to to go for that bridge. He's come away from it now. He's accepted defeat. But 
Yeah, when you've got obstacles like that in the water. Maybe this is actually perfect. It's only a smaller fish as well, this one. What a stunning little fish. Look at him. Bosh. Get in that net. Look at that. What a stunning little fish. Right, I'm going to get a picture of him. Right, I'll get him back. And hopefully, we'll get another one pretty quick. Oh, it's freezing. Try and catch one more, and then I think we'll call it a day. Well, the looks of things, I think we'll be getting another session out of these, these maggots. Just put in a full, a full cab pot of them, just down there. Just drag in the rig over the top of them. Oh, that wind's cold. I have to put my hood up. I'm going to have Five minutes here, and then we'll knock it on the head because oh, I'm absolutely freezing. And then two nice little carp. I think that's enough. Don't think there's any more carp down there. Three, two, one. That's enough. Get some gear packed up. Ooh, that's absolutely freezing. The gear we've used today, starting at the top, just got that elastic, 13 Dura slip, 
and then the float is just a mud liner from dot and down, point three. Uh, we plumbed up with a thirty gram plummet, nice flat one, lovely, lovely little plummet. And then the cad pots, I just keep more cad pots in the guru. It's actually a hook length case, but the cad pot I've used is this Badger Matrix Flexi Pot and I've actually it actually looks like that but I've just put on an extender so you put put one of them on it just makes it a bit deeper just means you can feed a little bit more and it's got a lid on just to help keep them maggots in and let's keep that in in a little guru box, just keep all my pots in there. Got some maggots, and that's about it. On my, I've got my cupping kit out because on it, I'm not meant to be showing you this, but on it, it's just marked. It's actually a sticker that is stuck on my top kit and it goes up to three foot so I know when I've got my rig I can line up my rig with this and it'll tell me how deep I'm fishing that's about it for kit couldn't be any more simpler I'm gonna get some gear packed up now and I'll see you in a minute. So we're all packed up and good to go. These short sessions, if you like them, give it a thumbs up. And I know then to keep doing them. But thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.